Lots of questions, as you'd expect, coming in for you, Andy. Here's um, one um, talking about strike partners. I don't know if he would make your, your number one, but who was your, your best strike partner? I, I will go with Yorkie. But, um, who else gets an honourable Peter mention? Peter Beers was... He was a magician, footballing magician. Um, intelligence, everything. You know, he's the, he's the first individual to say to me, just stand still. So you can't stand still. You know when people say when you're young, oh, you've got to keep moving, keep moving. Peter said, no, just stand still, you'll get space. I turned and said, how do you do that? You know, within time you start to learn, if you stand still, of course you're going to get space. So Peter Beersy was fantastic as well. Who is the best player that you ever played with? Best player? Oh, that's, that's such a tough one. You know, it's, it's a toss-up for me between Roy and Scolzi. Two different, but two fantastic players. I love playing with a pair of them. Why Roy? Roy, because never mind just his leadership qualities. As a player, he was top, top draw. Um, no, that's, we, we all remember the game at Juventus, you know, his performance there, but that was just one of them. That was just one of them, you know. He, he was an individual that, I mean, you, you always have by his side when it comes to playing football, definitely. What was his leadership like at half-time, a Highfield Road, a Coventry one day? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll leave, Leading I'll, question, Your Honour. Yeah, I'll leave Nev to tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Just give us a little flavour of it. Go on, Andy. <laughs> uh, you, 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 know, you know, Roy, at, at the best of times, you know, we had a very short fuse, but he, he let Gary Neville know that that evening. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll leave it there. Gary's on next week. He's not here to defend himself anyway. <laughs> um, well, you played with some incredible characters, didn't you? Not just Roy Keane. Describe Cantona. How was he? What was his character like in the changing room? You know, Eric was... Um, Eric was special. Um, as a person, as, as a player, he was a fantastic player. But he, he, had, he had this great aura around him. The aura was... It was crazy, man. It was like he was floating half the time. You know, he's, he's very, very special amongst the football club and the younger boys coming through. And you, you, you had to learn off him because... For him to come to England and did what he'd done in England, you know, as um, a foreign player, he was real, real good and good to see. People always like to, to ask these questions as well, not just the players that you played with. Uh, who was the best defender you ever played against? Um, well, we spoke about one today, Ayala. Yeah. Uh, he, he, he was Valencia. Tough. Yeah, yeah, he was really tough. But I had another boy at um, Juventus as well, was it uh, Montero? Montero, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah he, he was naughty. He yeah. was very, very naughty, but it's the kind of individual that you want to play against because when, when, when you're playing in Europe, you want to play against the best, and he was definitely one of those. Um, who... <laughs> this is very relevant to now as well. Would the, the team we were talking about 20 years ago... Yes. Would they beat the yes. Manchester City team today? Yes. Why? Why? Because I, I think we had all the components to beat the Manchester City team of today. I, I think football's changed as well. I, I think football's changed a hell of a lot. But I, I, I look at the Manchester United team I played in and I, I genuinely believe we, we'd match any team, any team now. Yeah, because we, we, had, we had all the tools to beat, I mean, all the best teams. You, you played for Sunderland. We should remind people that. Newcastle fans are, are still watching. Mm -hmm. and, and also this, did you feel any sense of guilt when joining Manchester City as no, a great? It's, it's a case of this one, you know. Ultimately, you're a professional footballer, so... I, I used to sum it up like this. You might leave one company and go to another. Yeah, and it's the, it's the team that, or it's the company that people tell me, I say, oh, you can't go, go to them because they're your competitor or whatever, maybe. But it's your job. Ultimately, it's your job. You, you want to try and do, do the best in your job you can do. So the decision for me was, was based around my kids. You know, it was based around my kids and getting back close to my kids and that. So, yeah, it was a good decision at the time. But it's interesting that you've probably gone to, you know, obviously the Sunderland, Newcastle, the, the Manchester uh, situation as well. But it still seems that you, you're loved by Manchester United fans. I'm sure you're still loved by Newcastle fans. Because it's interesting that is because sometimes that's a problem for players. Mm. If you go to the rival, wh why, why do you think that is? You still thought of uh, so well. You know, you know, I, I've, I've always had a great rapport with fans. You know, Manchester United fans and the, and the Newcastle fans. And I know, especially in, in, in Newcastle. Fans. Some of them were disappointed in the way I left, but I, I always tried to explain it was it's totally out of my hands. You know, if a manager makes a decision he wants to sell you, you turn and say to yourself, well, he doesn't want me anymore, so you, naturally you move on. So me going there and doing as well as they did, scoring the goals and that, I know now how much they appreciate me. I got inducted mm. into the Hall of Fame back in the last season. And that was a spe special thing, you know, to appreciate that. They do actually 
turn around and say, yeah, we do love you here, you know, fair enough, you left, you went to Manchester United, but what you've done for the football club is fantastic. Manchester United fans, I mean, I've, I've always had a great rapport with them as well. I think you, you, when you go to a football club, you work hard, you work as hard as you can do. When things are not going bad, you work even harder. But to get the goals as well and to play in a good team, mm -hmm. I, I will, I've always classed myself as a team player. And you do those kind of things, you know. You, you always can get a great report of fans. So I've been very fortunate in that way. Mm -hmm. You're talking about Kevin Keegan and your respect for him. What about Sir Alex Ferguson? How important was he for Andy, <coughs> excuse me, for Andy Cole? Yeah, he's, he's, yeah the, the boss is top man. He's, he's top man. He's um, a, a real good manager for me. Um, I, I, I always say he was the only manager who actually understood me because... You know, sometimes you have managers trying to figure you out and you're off saying, so why are you trying to figure me out? You know, let's just try to get the best out of me and let's play football. Whereby the boss was, was very, very good that way. You know, he's, he could manage any error and he knew how to get the best out of each individual, which I found was that's fantastic. And is it, is it a bit of a myth that, you know, you, from the outside, you have, have Alex Ferguson and the hairdryer and going after people and that. Is, is it a bit of a myth and is actually his relationship yeah. with players... That's the key to his actual success. Yeah, because if you look at his success over the areas he's managed, you know, he's managed from the areas that we started up in when you could say whatever you want to say to play, you had to accept it, you get on with it. There was no, like, crying to anybody. You just had to get on with it. And then when the farm boys started to come into the game, he managed those as well in a totally different way to the way he'd managed the English boys or the Scandi boys and that. So you, you, look, you look at things like that and you turn around and say to yourself... You know, that, that's what it's all about. Because football now is about managing people, mm. you know, delegating. But you've got to manage people. You've got to be a, a people person now, I think, to be a good manager. Do you think, in a way, Andy, that was what you, you lacked with England? What was it, 15 caps? Yeah. 15 caps for, for the third highest goal scorer in Premier League history. Doesn't sound enough. Did you lack a manager that really believed in you? Uh, yeah, you, you could say that, yeah. Because ultimately, when, when, when you play for England, you know, you, you've got to have... A manager who believes in you, believes that you're good enough to play at that level. Now, I, I always knew I was good enough to play at that level because I'm playing Champions League football every other week. Now, if you're playing Champions League football every other week, you're playing with Manchester United, you know you're good enough because, not being disrespectful, you're playing against some of the best defenders in the world in those tournaments because you're playing against the biggest clubs. You know, when you, when you move on to the international level, you should be the same kind of thing. So it's about trust. You know, and I, I don't believe I had a a manager who actually trusted me to believe that I could play at that level, which, like I said, whereby I already knew I could play at that level. I, there's something I've always thought, not just because you're here and you're talking about your, your club career is obviously a lot better than your, your international career. And I, I used to always use an example, I don't know why I use these two players, but Gareth Southgate is now the England manager. I think probably got 50, 60 caps for England. You had Steve Bruce, who was your captain, didn't play once for England. And, and it's maybe similar to yourself now. Would you ha rather have a great club career or have 70, 80 caps? Mm. I mean, for me, look, I used to always think I'd rather have Steve Bruce and Steve Bruce and Gareth, no disrespect to any of them, but I'd rather have a Steve Bruce career where you don't actually play for your country, but you're lifting titles, right. you're playing the Champions League, you're playing in these, these games, FA Cup semi finals, finals. For me, that was always a bigger thing to do. That. Listen, if you won the, a tournament with England, that probably surpasses everything, but. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Yeah, well, of course I do, because ultimately, your club football is your bread and butter. Because yeah. it, however you look at it, England's your bonus. Mm. Because if you're good enough, you get chosen to play for England, so that, that's your bonus. When, when you're growing up wanting to play football, you want to represent your club team. You want to do the best you can do. You know, then you want to try and represent your respective country. You know, so I always say when I was playing football, when, when I want to play football, I want to win things. I want to win things. When I retire, I want to say, I was fortunate to win X, Y, Z. And if I, if I didn't win things, I'd be disappointed in myself. So I've, I've, I've enjoyed it, definitely. It's an incredible career. We've, we've loved reliving it with you, Andy. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much for being with us Thank tonight. Thank you very much. On Monday Night Football.